Clone War caster and Leda. I don't want to really. What's, what's I don't, driving it though? I don't want to really frame it like boys versus girls. Okay, I'm not framing it boys versus girls. <laughs> it's just a Clone War. <laughs> but why? What's driving it? What do you think? Um, well, that's the mystery. I mean, we're in Sarah's shoes, um, and they know nothing about Caster. So it really is the, the, the spine of the season is, who are they? What do they want? Why are they after us? And, um, and as, as this remains Sarah's story at its heart, um, you know, this journey of who are they is going to lead her closer to the bigger question of who are we. Um, so, um, and also, to answer your question, it's not just them, it's who controls them, who's pulling their strings, who's driving them. Um, and, and it's not the only thing that they're up against this season. They're up against their own internal um, uh, divisions and secrets and, and ploys, and their own also uh, you know, they've got Dyad and they've got this new level above Dyad <laughs> to contend with. When, when you first started working on uh, Orphan Black and everything, did you envision this going to, to this direction or, in, or see where you are now? When you started at the beginning, did you see the spot you are now or the future where it's going? Each season Maybe generally. I think maybe not at the very beginning, but I think, you know, by the by the beginning of the second season we knew we wanted, or the end of the first season we knew we wanted to introduce a male clone, that that was going to be become part of our mythology, that Project Caster and Project Lita, that we'd have these two factions. Um, so, I mean, it's that's part of the organic process. I mean, we do have a big picture. We do, we always have some big big tent poles of story and big tent poles of character um, moments and revelations that we know are coming we know we know some things we want to do next year we know them we know you know now but we always um, remain organic enough to for instance not kill Larry Mellon and decide to make him the male clone we didn't know it was going to be that you know but when we got to that end point and we were like who's it going to be are we going to cast someone new um, I was like, well, we didn't kill Ari, Ari. Maybe that was for a really good reason, you know, because then the show does that thing that we really like. It doubles back on itself, and you're pulling a, a, char a character out of the out of the your show's own mythology that that you work really hard to then make that make sense, right? And then you look smart. It's like you wanted to do it the whole time. We've heard Paul kind of has a big power play this season. Can you talk about what's going on with his character? Um, well, he has a great, yeah. He, Dylan Bruce's Paul has a great arc this year. Um, uh, you know, he was revealed as a double agent at the end of last season. Um, but where does his heart lie? Uh, that's a question we're gonna uh, we're gonna explore and maybe even answer. I even know who Paul is by the end of the season. We come back to. Um, the cult po Polythians um, yeah. because Elena, Helena and um, Gracie are pregnant <laughs> with the cult leader's baby. So how does that figure into season three? Well, um, you know, one of Ari's characters is Mark, the first one that we ever met. So Mark and uh, Mark and Gracie have this sweet little love story um, that was that was budding at the in in, in season two, and we sort of left them on the on the run. Um, and it's it's safe to say that that Mark and Gracie are gonna crash back into us for sure. Yeah. How many of the male clones can you talk about that they introduced this season? I think it's kind of out there. Is it? It's safe to say there's four or maybe more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ones we've seen are kind of. It's like they're not exactly sane. Each one has a little bit of a bent to them. Is that going to be a question that's going to get addressed, or are we just kind of acknowledge that they're all kind of dead? <laughs> well, the you know, while while Lita was like raised in this nurturing kind of context where uh, where they were separate from one another and had their own environments um, and grew up to like any other individual. They haven't. Caster hasn't. They've grown up in this little dog pack, this little wolf pack, and 
I mean, again, it's like it's like it's like family. That's their family. An all male wolf pack family is going to be barking mad insane. They'd be like, aggressive, but I think they're a little fractured. Their mental state is it's, unstable. It's yeah. It's and we'll get to we'll get to know more about how they were raised and who raised them and and, and all of that this season. It's really. Um, uh, it's really a, a, part, a real part of what Ari gets to do this year is is play those, um, you know, aggressive and and, and 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 uniquely damaged characters. When, when you're writing for uh, Tatiana and you're writing all the different parts of the clone, is there one particular clone's voice that you hear? Yeah, I'm like, oh my god, I want to watch this. I'll tell you which is the hardest is Sarah's, um, and it's not the English uh, thing. I mean, her voice isn't isn't that hard, but Sarah is always the hardest. She's the center of the story. Um, she carries the mystery, which is the hard part uh, for the writers. Um, Allison is you know Allison is the easiest. Allison writes herself. She's a lot of fun. I think all the writers would say that Allison is the easiest. Um, Helena, I have a gas writing Helena. She's the funniest. And then, and then Cosima is very challenging too because she's smart. And uh, but I, I, I really, I really like writing Cosima uh, because she's. She's just she's, she's got a unique intelligence. Um, uh, although I'll often hand off her jargon, I'll, I'll hand off her science to Chris Roberts, who's uh, like our our real go-to science guy in the writers' room. Um, so yeah, if that answers your your questions, they're all uh, they're, I've. I've absorbed their vo their voices, uh, so um, getting their voices in the, isn't hard. But but how uh, what they're what they're actually doing with those with their voices is, is, is a challenge. But I'm just saying she's a teacher. Yeah. It's it's that um, it's that she is the one at the leading edge of the mystery. She's the one pushing the others to do do the stuff, and 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 she's you know that's that's been Sarah's journey is to become this reluctant leader, um, and you know from the person we met in the first frame that was willing to um, you know do something rather immoral. And uh, and make a terrible decision, but for 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 the right reason. Um, and now I think she's a far more moral character. I think uh, she has a lot more moral fiber now, um, and has has taken on that that leadership. Will we see um, a little bit more of Kira's uh, powers, let's say? She is the wisest six-year-old or however she is I've ever seen. <laughs> so will we have that um, come back in? And <laughs> Uh, yeah, 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 a bit. I would say that, um, but the, that Kira's, like, the sort of ineffable power, uh, or this ineffable quality that Kira has, if, you know, it, it, it is, it is mysterious, but to me, I always, I always look at that and, and say, that, uh, it's mysterious, it's, it's, it's human. Whatever that is with her, it's the human factor. It's the it's, it's the things that we don't know about ourselves and our own abilities, our own power, our own, our own te telekinetic or, or, or empathetic. She's an empath, uh, really. You know, um, and that's uh, uh, that's you don't really want to define it. You know, um, but it's a beautiful thing.